one. Good evening. Today is June 25th. This is a special meeting of the Northampton City Council. I am Gina Louise Shara, and I will be presiding this evening. This meeting and all who are participating on it uh, will be audio and video recorded. And thank you to Northampton Open Media, as always, for providing that, um, for providing access to everyone and for um, providing the uh, recording of this video on their government uh, video archive channel. So people are coming in um, and we will start. Um, so the purpose of this meeting is to comply with the instructions for the public. Oh, I'm sorry, roll call. Laura, could you do a roll first and then? Sure. Council <clears throat> Councilor Dwight. Here. Councilor Foster. Here. Councilor Jarrett. Here. Councilor Labarge. Here. Councilor Maori. Here. Councilor Nash. <clears throat> oh, oh, hold on. There you go. Councilor Nash. I am here. He's okay. coming. Councillor Quinlan. Here. Councillor Shara. Here. And Councillor Thorpe. Here. Okay. Madam Chair, you have a quorum. Thank you. Um, so the purpose of this meeting is to comply with the instructions for a public body that is in receipt of an open meeting law complaint. Um, instructions state that we must meet to review the complaint within 14 days of receiving it and must respond to the complainant and copy the attorney general also within those 14 days. Um, there are two complaints that were filed which are on the agenda for review and response this evening. One from Friday, June 19th um, at 4.15 PM, I received it as the council president. Um, and it was also received by the city clerk. Uh, that complaint is by Joshua Wallace for the um, uh, representing the New England Police Benevolent Association Local 186. And the second one was received um, only by me, as far as I know, as the council president on Sunday at 9.40 p.m. Um, and that was from Brian Letzeisen for the New England Police Benevolent Association Local 187. The uh, city solicitor, Alan Seawald, is joining us. Um, and we will proceed. Can't hear. I, we can't hear you, Alan. You're not muted, though. Is that better? Yes. Okay. My, I guess my headphones aren't working. Um, so um, thank you, Council President. Um, as uh, the President said, <clears throat> the goal here um, is to figure out a way uh, to respond to this complaint within 14 business days, which will end on July 9th for both complaints because they were received on a weekend. And uh, so the, the first day is the first weekday after, um, or business day after. Um, so that's the, that's the goal here, is to formulate a response. Um, now there are different methods to formulate a response and to determine what this response should be. Um, Counselors could opt to have an independent investigation done by someone independent of the city. I would not perform that investigation. I would not be involved in the investigation. Um, and, um, or um, you can self-disclose. I mean, those are options. Um, and you know, if a self-disclosure is made and a determination is made that there was a violation, well, then you go on to deal with what the remedy is going to be, um, you know, right up to the point of revoting the um, the uh, the order for the general fund budget um, <clears throat> and going through the entire process again. Um, if there is uh, self disclosure and there is no violation, um, then that's the response, and we're done. And I, I could work with the council president or with whoever the council uh, designates to formulate the response and send it. Um, but that's what needs to happen here. Um, there is some open, there is an open question uh, with regard to how uh, extra 
uh, out, how communications outside of the meeting are handled in the, in the uh, virtual meeting age that we're in. Um, and the Division of Open Government at the Attorney General's Office, with which I consulted, uh, has not taken a position yet on whether two counselors speaking uh, at intermission uh, is a violation. Normally, we always think about a quorum. Uh, but they were the the assistant attorney general I spoke with was not willing to commit to a uh, uh, to a position because they haven't taken a position and this may be the case in which they take a position on that and uh, they don't want to have prejudged or given advice that is inconsistent with what ultimately is decided on the facts of this case so that's where we are. Um, and so it's really up to the, the council to decide how it wants to proceed, keeping in mind that the goal here is within 14 business days to get a response out to the complainants. Um, I, I haven't gone through the complaints. I did go through the complaints a little bit in the email that I know is shared, shared with all of you. And, uh, but if somebody needs you know, some information about what's in the complaint, I'm, I'm happy to address that. Councillor Dwight. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Solicitor Seawald. I mean, um, can others hear her? Can, can you hear me, Alan? Alan, you, your earbuds are out, so you can't hear Hello. anything. So, <laughs> Alan, can you not hear? Uh oh. No, I'm not hearing. Hang on. Okay. Um, we can hear you. You can't hear me telling you that, though. <laughs> hmm. Huh. No, it was me. It was it was there nice. You, go. you can you, got you it? can hear okay? My computer's in the shop, so I'm using somebody else's computer to do this. So it's uh it's been a great, great week. Okay. So, okay, so you, you can, can hear, but you can hear now. I can hear now. Okay. So Alan, the um I understand that uh, the rules have changed uh, substantially to uh in response to COVID. For remote participation in meetings and of course open meeting law by the way i should state that this council and this city has been assiduous about um adhering to not only the spirit i mean not only the letter of the law but the spirit of the law but in this instance it seems to me if, if we weren't in remote participation and we went into recess a counselor walking outside for say a cigarette or to the bathroom or something uh, he's not, as I understood, is not precluded or disallowed from having a conversation with another counselor. Now, I say this because one, in the first part, I don't think what they're alleging actually even has occurred. I don't believe that we'll find out. But even if it did, what, what is being alleged in both complaints, it doesn't seem to me actually is a de facto violation, not only because of quorum issues, but also because of standing rules that allow uh, counselors to communicate, not serially, not collectively in a quorum, but individually on an issue that's being deliberated is it wouldn't be a violation. Am I incorrect on this? You, you're you're correct, but that you know those kind of casual conversations are different than a concerted effort to secretly communicate behind the scenes in the middle of a meeting. And I'm not saying it's a violation, but that's the allegation. You're, you're in a world of circumstantial evidence, and this is how right. circumstantial evidence works. You know, people string together a series of events and assume that they're related to each other. And um, Hello? my Siri just decided to, to answer the question, <laughs> and I'm not really sure how to uh, turn it off. That, uh, that would be a violation. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, so, you know, we're in a different world. Um, is it more like three counselors at, at recess deciding to go into a separate room and have a conversation? Well, at least people know that that's happening. Here, the conversations are behind the scenes and no one knows that they're happening. I'm not saying that they're violations. I would take the position that it's not a violation. But I'm just telling you that the, the Division of Open Government has not decided what position they're going to take on this COVID-19 open meeting law uh, reorganization that we're operating under. So uh, that's all I'm saying. I do believe okay. in, in the quorum requirement, but 
you know, if we're going to, uh, and so I'll leave it at that. I don't know what the Division of Open Government uh, will do, but it certainly will be my position that a conversation between two counselors uh, at, at a recess is not a violation of the open meeting law. That would certainly and be my position. But a fo a follow-up question, uh, would it be an appropriate process if we, in the, in the context of this meeting, uh, determined uh, positively or negatively whether the alleged uh, violation occurred? If we determine that it hasn't, is that adequate? Is that's that the evidence? The, that's the, the evidence, evidence. okay. What happens is that I, you know, I or someone on your behalf will relay to the complainants that, you know, based on what was determined at this meeting, um, no violation has occurred and there'll be no remedial action. That's the answer. Or we can do this in a different way. We can have, a, you know, a more formal investigation done and, you know, and you'll, you'll be contacted by the investigator who will be asking you questions and perhaps asking you for documents. Uh, there's nothing that this council can do to force you to produce documents or to speak to anyone. Um, so, but that's totally up to you. Okay, so I, I was just, I, I was just wondering if we could expedite this and end this in this meeting, if that's a possibility and it is. Okay, thank you, thank you. Councilor Mayori, I see your hand. Yeah, I was just gonna say, I mean, to clarify with Alan, I mean, what we, what the councilors have had to go on is the statute, and the statute is very clear on this. So, I, I guess I guess that's what I want to say. The statute is not unclear. In the statute, you need serial or forum, you know, or to be breaking um, open meeting law. So that's what we have to go on. Without another, what you're saying is there's no other ruling about that. That's right. Okay, I just want to clarify that. And um, I just is just, I, I'm not saying I want to do this. I'm just trying to understand, is this a situation where we would go into executive session? No. Or have that, uh, even though it has to do with some, you know, um, I guess it's, accusations against some of the counselors or no. There's nothing in the, in the open meeting law that allows, you know, an executive session because somebody is making an allegation. But isn't that one of the stipulations for an uh, executive session? That someone's making an allegation. People make allegations all the time. Right now we have an open meeting law violation and I think it would be very odd to go into secret meetings. I'm not, I'm, I'm not proposing it. I'm just trying right. to understand. Uh, no, I'm not. I, I don't believe and, it. And it wouldn't be secret. Executive sessions are, are made public. So um, at some point they are made public. Yeah, so that's not secret. But it, is, it, but it is a secret meeting. I mean, it is a, a meeting where the public's excluded. Yeah. And I don't believe it is appropriate at this point. Okay. Uh, there's no, no, I'm not proposing it. I'm trying to understand. Yeah. And um, so I would also uh, point out, Council Mayori, I do understand the conundrum for public uh, officials such as yourselves, but we're not operating under the, uh, under the statute completely. You understand that we would be doing what we're doing right now if we were operating under the statute. So there are, we're, we're operating under an order from the governor uh, that uh, alters the statute. And now the question is, in this altered environment, what are the rules? I agree that I will take the position that a quorum is necessary in order to violate the open meeting law. All I'm telling you is that the Assistant Attorney General with whom I spoke in the uh, Division of Open Government would not commit to that position. That's all I'm telling you. And I can tell you no more than that. Um, and she said she will be looking carefully at our decision because it is what we call a case of first impression for them, meaning they haven't ruled on it before. Okay, I've got Councilor Labarge and then Councilor Jarrett. Thank you, Council President, Junior Louise Shearer. Sure. Um, I just want to talk for myself here tonight that I am requesting as a city councilor, Marianne Labarge, to put on record that I did not speak to any councilor while I was on my break during the June 18th, 2020 city council meeting. You have received a letter from me on the open meeting law complaint filed, a letter from my brother, George Pappas, 
from Snellsville, Georgia, and from Ruth McGrath. These letters verify the fact that during the June 18th, 2020 City Council meeting, during my break time, I only spoke to my brother on the phone. And my brother had called and made three calls, three calls. I didn't answer two because we were in session. On break time, my brother called again and I talked with my brother that I was on a break for five minutes and he was concerned because he had received information from one of my family members that with that protest that went on Wednesday night, my husband had gone outside on Thursday morning to get the Gazette and there was a very large sign placed on the hood of my car. It was a shower curtain it appeared to be like cloth wise from the top of, of the top of my car to the ground. So that is why my brother kept calling me to see if everybody was not in harm way. So that is what I have to say. As a city councilor, I did not speak to any councilor during my break time. Thank you. Okay, Councilor Jarrett. Uh, thank you. I just wanted to, I, I, um, I was perusing the state's uh, frequently asked questions about open meeting law, and there's one, uh, may members of public bodies who are physically present, so different than this, at a meeting use electronic messaging, such as text messaging or email, to communicate with other public body members during that meeting? And um, from that answer, Electronic messaging during a meeting by less than a quorum of the public body's members, while not directly prohibited by the open meeting law, is discouraged if those electronic communications are not shared at the meeting with the members of the public who are present. Um, so this doesn't address the question of messaging during a recess of a virtual meeting, but uh, since during a physical meeting it is only discouraged and not prohibited and, and during a meeting would be a higher standard it does suggest that it would be discouraged and not prohibited, but of course that's just um, one interpretation. I hope that we at some point get guidance uh, from the Division of Open Government. We're, we're in a brave new world, Counselor. Uh, I, I'm not sure what analogy is most apt. I just don't know. Yeah. You know, uh, the uh, the assistant attorney general said that it is, she believes that it's inappropriate at a virtual meeting for counselors to be texting with each other. And she also believes that it's inappropriate to be using the chat feature on, on uh, Zoom with each other privately. Um, you know, it, they're just different rules in the virtual world because no one knows what you're doing. You can set it up so no one can see what you're doing. And, um, you know, at least in um, you know, in a uh, in a in an in-person meeting, people can see what you're doing. I'm not sure it makes a difference. I, I don't know. Uh, I, as I said, I will take the position that a quorum is necessary, that the old rules apply here. Uh, all I'm telling you is that I don't know that that's correct, and I don't know that that's the way the division of open government will come down. Uh, um, I'll just say that I I always try to limit the, I, I change the chat settings so that people can only chat to me. Um, and, uh, and then actually after public comment, I try and turn it off entirely um, because I just use it during public comments so that if people are having trouble figuring out how to raise their hand or having other difficulties that they can alert me to that. Um, but I've always tried to make sure that the council couldn't chat with, with each other or anybody else. Uh, Councillor Dwight. Okay, so we've just heard Councillor Labarge, who was the focus of one of the allegations, refute uh, rather vehemently the allegation. So that's one. Uh, uh, the allegation alleges that she was persuaded during the course of the uh, uh, um, recess to change her vote. Um, and, and clearly that phone call did not figure into her decision, uh, nor was it a phone call or communication from any counselor. The, uh, what they alleged is that uh, Counselor Jarrett, of course, was 
madly working the phones and uh, twisting arms. And, um, and if we can clear that up, I, I think we've done our due diligence. Well, that, that would be with regard to Mr. Wall, uh, Officer Wallace's complaint. The other complaint is broader. I to uh, how so? The, the other complaint alleges that some or all of the counselors were uh, were in discussions. Were in discussions about that vote? Yes. Some, if not some of, if not all of the councils participated in communication with each other, or were aware that other councils participated in communications with each other. Well, it, should it come to it, and I, first I like to clear up the first one, but um, would, if we asked for a vote of councilors who did uh, communicate with each other relative to deliberation of that vote, and there is a show of hands that indicates that um, that did not occur. Is that adequate? Uh, if, if there are fewer than a quorum hands go up, I, I believe that that would be adequate. Thank you. Because I will, as I said, take the position that a quorum uh, is necessary. Now, of course, um, we're going to have to know who communicated with whom because well, no, if we don't have, we don't get to five, then, then it's right. We don't, no, no, if we don't get to five, then there's clearly a violation that's worthy of investigation. I, I agree, I would concur. But if, if not, if we get to five, and I'm pretty confident we will, and uh, then I, I just hope that that vote reflects our, the extent of our investigation, we, we, we are not an investigative body, we have no, <laughs> We have no judicial authority, as we're told over and over and over again. So to the extent that we are capable of investigating, which is to rely on the uh, honest responses from the counselors, I think that's that's game, set, match. Now, I will say, obviously, that the attorney general has great investigatory powers. The right. attorney general has powers to you know, force you to testify and to produce right. documents. I will say that the Division of Open Government does not usually um, engage in subpoenas and force testimony, that sort of thing. They do take people at their word. But if there's something amiss, the, the uh, you know, Attorney General's office can file a civil lawsuit. They could, you know, there are plenty of remedies to get your, all of your phone records. And may I, as an aside, remind you that Earlier this this year, I believe it was, I explained yes. why you shouldn't use your private email for public business. And we are, you know, this is just an example for those of you who use private email, um, that you could have, a, you know, a court ordering uh, the attorney general to rummage through your email. And so this is just an example as an aside. Um, so uh, that could happen, but that's not going to happen in this form. Right, right. Right. We don't, we don't have, have, we don't we don't have, have authority. No. And you don't have authority to exclude anybody from voting. You don't have the authority to impose civil fines. The attorney general certainly does have all of that, but you don't. And so this is take it at its word, at your word, and, um, and you know, proceed from there. Okay, I saw Councillor Thorpe, and then Thank I see you. Councillor Labarge. Thank you. So attorneys, uh, Seawald and all the counselors just want to let you know that uh, I didn't have any conversation with anyone during deliberation. And I can tell you that I stand by my no vote that was taken earlier. And the fact that I voted to approve the whole budget yeah. should not reverse that decision. And I didn't think it would reverse that decision I made. I saw it as there's a part of the budget I didn't agree with, but I'm still going to um, approve the whole budget in its entirety. I still believe that there is a plan that is needed and a measured approach to this. And um, I still believe that, you know, whether it's a select committee or a, um, a commission to look at the things that really need to get done to do the things that the community is asking us to do. So even before the meeting commenced, I plan to uh, do exactly as I did. And uh, there should be no consideration as my no vote was being a, a reversal. So thank you. Okay, I saw Councillor Labarge before 
Um, Alan, the three letters that you received, Consular President Gina Louise Shera, and I think also it was sent to the union. Where does that go from here? Right now it's in the record of this meeting okay. and um, uh, hopefully it will never be needed again. Thank you. Councilor Jarrett. Uh, thank you. So, right, the complaint was brought because, um, you know, I withdrew re reconsideration after the recess. Um, Councilor Labarge was noted answering a phone call and Councilors Labarge and Thorpe voted to adopt the budget, although they had not voted for the amendment. And with the, um, uh, you know, with Councilor Labarge and Thorpe, um, clearly communicating that they did not communicate with another counselor, um, clearly stating, um, does that settle the matter in terms of um, if that clearly was not the, you know, I didn't have any communication with them uh, because it, in, in, in affecting my decision to withdraw the reconsideration. Well, um, the allegations in one of the complaints is that some or all of the counselors had communications among the counselors. And so that's the allegation. And it's, uh, uh, I, I don't think that just simply saying that you didn't talk to the people whose votes changed um, resolves uh, the matter. The question is, were there communications either as a group, which didn't seem like there very much time to put together a group phone call or serial conversations or some, um, some coordination uh, among counselors, and that's you know that's the question. Um, and um, as again, simply because there may have been conversations, doesn't mean that there was a violation. But we won't know whether there's a violation until we know what conversations happened, and that's either going to happen by self-disclosure or that's going to have to happen with an investigation. But um, in my view, it's not enough just to say that I didn't speak to Councilor Thorpe or to Councilor Labarge. It seems like we're in the position to at least eliminate, eliminate and come in and review, uh, have a result of the review. Uh, Councilor Mayori, we're having trouble hearing. Okay. Let me take this off. Everyone's having issues with that. Uh, let me just uh, apologize. Let me turn this air conditioner off because I can't hear you. Excuse me, thank you for your patience. I had to turn the air conditioner off, sadly, so I could make sure I could hear you. I, I'm just trying to kind of um, make this less overwhelming. It seems to me it's clear that we don't even have the premise of, of, of violating at least one of these, um, you know, claims in one of these complaints. So if we could eliminate one complaint in terms of covering it, we could concentrate on the other. I think it would feel less overwhelming to me. Um, based on what Councillor Labarge has uh, told us. Does that make sense? Sure. I think that we probably have resolved the uh, the Wallace complaint. Okay. okay. That, I just want it would be easier for me to kind of focus if I could take one of, if we know. So great. Thank you. Given that the allegations were very specific about two specific councillors. Yep. And Councillor Labarge has said that no councillor has contacted. Right. So I, I think we've covered that one. So that was the Wallace, yeah, okay. Thank you. Councilor Dwight, did I see your hand? Yeah, um, so so we move on to the second one, which is, as the solicitor says, is a broader one. So essentially the allegation is that we were deliberating on the side between counselors um, and by electronic communication and that uh, persuasion was applied and to influence the vote. And I will say right now, I did not deliberate in any way electronically other than what was seen on in the course of the meeting. I did not transmit anything relative to uh, the order that was being discussed. So um, in, in that regard, I, I, I just, I don't think, actually, to be honest, I'm receiving texts from people all over the place during the course of a meeting, uh, family members, uh, people who are people outside people trying to uh, apply persuasion, but for, but 
I am not communicating with other counselors in, in a, or deliberating with them, and particularly during that vote. There is not, I mean, I, I will say that I have communicated with counselors at times during a meeting that had nothing to do with what we were deliberating. So, um, so there, I, I think uh, if that counts towards the um, second allegation from, um, from Local 187. So, Councilor, you're, you're saying that you had no communications with other counselors during the recess? Uh, no, I'm sorry. I uh, had texted the council president to say that Marianne LaBarge's mic was open. So to indicate that she might want to mute her because she was having what looked like a personal phone call and turned out it was. And I thought that uh, while we want to abide by the letter of the open meeting law, that would not qualify and it wouldn't be appropriate. Appreciate it. I'll put you down um, as a no. <laughs> that's a no, yes. So since I was the one who received that communication from Councillor Dwight, I'll, I will agree that um, I had gone to the bathroom when I came back. Actually, before I saw his text, um, I heard that Councillor LaBarge was, was having a conversation um, during recess, so I muted her, and then I saw that Councillor Dwight had actually alerted me to the fact that um, she had left her mic unmuted during recess. And that's it. <laughs> that was the extent of my communication. Oh, Councillor Nash, hold on. Can you not unmute? Hold on. Did that work? Okay. No. So, um, you know, I, I had no deliberations, uh, communications with other counselors during that um, very critical and difficult. And I would say, you know, really, it, it was an awful vote. I mean, I, I, I appreciate where we landed, um, but I, I sincerely, um, I, my colleagues, all of you, I, I sense that all of us were sweating the details of making that very difficult decision. And I don't hold anybody's votes against them. And I don't think that anybody was persuaded by anything outside of that meeting and that, um, and that I wasn't involved in anything like that. Um, but um, but I, I just, from the energy in that virtual room, I, I don't sense any of that going on. And, um, and I, I sensed we were all there making a very difficult decision. So thank you. Thank you. Councillor Jarrett. Thank you. Um, I just want to, so we have now ascertained that a quorum of counselors did not communicate. Um, so, and so I would, I also want to say that I see this as an attempt to intimidate um, or a, just a lack of understanding of the open meeting law. I mean, I think no reasonable person would suspect that a quorum, which is five, of counselors communicated with each other in that 13 minutes. Um, so the question is, you know, we've 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 essentially uh, ascertained that 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 the quorum did not happen. Do we want to continue and each of us, uh, you know, give our uh, <clears throat> statement before remaining, or um, do we want to just end because we've um, we've done. Uh, our duty. Councilor Labarge? Yes. Um, I felt that I had my right to do a statement of I was not guilty of talking to anybody. Never have, as long as I've been a counselor, of any kind of debates going on. And my right here is my right. So I did what I had to do to prove who I was talking to. So I am very comfortable of having those letters that have been submitted in of who I was talking to. 
Thank you, thank you, President. Thank you. Councillor Dwight, did I see your hand? Yes, sorry. Um, if, if anyone's uncomfortable going beyond this and is relative to communication, then uh, yes, I think we've met the letter of, of at least the statute as it stands. Um, and, and in fact, I don't think even if counselors, if there were two counselors who were communicating during the course of it that relative to the deliberation, I don't think that's a violation either. It's not different if they were sitting next to each other and mumbling to each other and stuff. But, and, and um, I'm satisfied the way it stands now, um, but if everyone else would feel more comfortable in that we went um, around the room, the virtual room, and made our declarations, if they would prefer that, I mean, that would certainly put an end to it, but at the same time, um, I, I think we've, meet the con we've met the conditions uh, that as, as they have been alleged and we have uh, successfully challenged them and refuted them. I agree with you. Councillor Quinlan. Well, in the spirit of that, I would just um, tell you that, that during that recess, I had communication with no one at all. Um, I had, uh, you know, basically just filled my water glass and sat back down. Thank you. Councillor Foster. Thank you, and and I recognize that I do believe we've met the spirit, but also would like to take the opportunity to say that I didn't have any communication during that recess as well. I um, refilled my water bottle, uh, like Councilor Quinlan, checked on my kids, and came back to the meeting. I wasn't communicating or deliberating with any other counselor. Councilor Mayori. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I, I just wanted to, to echo that I do feel this, the complainants are directly impacted by the reference vote. Um, they're not happy about the outcome of the vote. And so they want the vote undone. And while it is council's job to give this review of the complaints due diligence, I feel we need to adjust our airtime and oxygen um, that we give to this accordingly. It's clear we've, we've already established based on the statutes that uh, there was no quorum, there was no um, no open meeting law, and I mo I move to adjourn. Uh, we, I'm sorry, we can't adjourn yet. <laughs> we still have to figure out how we're going to proceed, which we must do. Um, uh, I saw Councillor Dwight. Um, yes, and. Uh, Depending on what the final outcome is here, Alan, uh, can we charge you with uh, writing the response? So we don't, we uh, T's are crossed, I's are dotted, and assets are covered. Um, uh, I would be happy to take that charge. I would work with the council president or with whomever else you, uh, as a council, would like me to do that, but that's totally up to you. The, the statute specifically allows you to uh, assign the response to one of the members, your your agent or your counsel. Okay, thank you. Uh, council President, if I could follow up a bit, um, that would be my re that would be my request. Actually, if I could uh, say that to you, that um, I would like uh, a letter drafted by the solicitor reflecting the um, the conclusions that we came to in the course of this conversation and we feel that they've adequately responded to both complaints and find them lacking. Um, th it would also be my preference to, and I'm happy to work with the solicitor to do that, but to have that letter drafted by the city system or the letter drafted. Does this require a vote? I, I know it's- No. <laughs> Motion, second and vote. Okay, I, I, I move that, that um, I, my statement before I move is a motion, it make a motion to uh, uh, have the solicitor draft up a letter um, uh, reporting the conclusions that we have come to and we find both complaints lacking. Second. Second that. Okay, motion's been made by Councilor Dwight, seconded by Councilor Foster. Discussion on this motion. I gotta start raising my hand. Seeing 
none. Roll call, um, Laura, please. Okay. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Foster. Yes. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Maori. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. And Councillor Thorpe. Yes. Okay. Um, great. Thank you. Thank you. So Wait, we don't get to go till uh, another four hours. <laughs> you guys want to hang out? Um, yeah. We will not be recessing, though. Um, no. So it was a joke. Too soon. Oh, that, um, I, 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 <laughs> I moved to adjourn. Second. Oh wait, Councillor Labar, oh. your hand was raised. Is there a reason? Yes. Are there yeah. people waiting to talk? I can see a list of people here. People are here in this meeting because it's a public meeting, but there's not, um, this was the only purpose for this meeting. So they can't speak. There's no public comment. There's no public point. comment? No. So um, my, my motion to adjourn uh, is Second. repeated. Second. Okay, I think we're, we're set. Um, so roll call please on adjourning. Yep. Councillor Foster. Yep. Councillor Jarrett. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Maori. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Quinlan. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Thorpe. Yes. And Councillor Dwight. Yes. Okay. See you all in a week and a half. <laughs>